Swing easy and hit it hard. It's been the Rotary Swing mantra since I founded RotarySwing.com back in 2005. I'm all about hitting the ball as far as I can while putting as little effort into it as humanly possible. And in today's lesson, you're going to see a student start to experience that for himself and see how you can take this into your game. You're going to learn some things you've probably never heard before, so make sure you stay all the way in to the end of the video where I'm going to talk about some really important concepts and you're going to watch just how amazing and how quick you can produce speed. Just watch this student here. I'm going to show you a highlight of what you're going to see toward the end of this video. Make your hands travel on a really wide circle. <laughs> yeah. Feels a little goofy, right? <laughs> Now let your hands drop and get close to your thighs and move them in a tighter circle. <laughs> yeah, it kind of like whips through. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not even trying that hard. It's cool. <laughs> there you go. So you can you can hear the difference, right? Seriously. Now burn this image in your head so you know what it's going to feel like for you to learn how to hit the ball effortlessly and farther than you ever have before, check it out in this lesson. Okay, so the hips are definitely getting very open. It looks like Okay, your shoulder is popping up pretty hard, pretty early. Your right shoulder. Mm -hmm. And that's causing a little bit of a flip because basically at some point you run out of stuff to move. And so you can see right here, not bad, but there's a little bit of a flip in there. And it's really because you're rotating so much so soon. Like your right shoulder is ripping out from under your chin very early. And that helps you get your hips very open. But if it happens too soon, you run out of rotation. So let me let me look it down the line real quick and I'll explain what that means. Yeah, all right. This so definitely is some, like, kind of weird follow through as well. This is just a sequencing, like a timing thing, okay? Okay. When you can swing really fast, and I can tell that you've been trying to like get as much as you can out of your swing, you, you know, you're going for it, <laughs> which is great. But the true mastery of the golf swing is to move as slowly as you can while swinging as fast as you can, mm -hmm. right? And right now you're swinging fast, and your body's moving fast. And you need to understand that to really be efficient and to get everything to kind of dial up the right efficiency level at every level of the swing, mm -hmm. you have to actually kind of calm some things down and you'll actually swing faster. And that's the hardest thing in golf to understand. It really is because there, it's a very complex machine when you think about all the forces that are going. We have rotational forces, right, coming from our hips, our legs can generate rotation, our shoulders can generate rotation, our core can generate rotation, and right. all of those things have to happen in the swing, but they have to happen in sequence. And same thing, now you've got rotation creating speed, and then you've got your arms that can do a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And when all of, and getting all of those things to, to interlock together perfectly mm -hmm. is the secret to the, what the pros do really well, okay? Right. And the one thing that you undoubtedly know about professional golf is that when you watch them swing, what, what does it look like? Pretty effortless. That's it, right? Yeah. And that's the trick. That's the secret to it. Amateurs tend to swing, especially like really high level, better amateur golfers like yourself, who are good. Like you've got a good golf swing. But taking that secret step over like the, the boundary line to understanding what it's really like to be able to be truly efficient and consistent 
because those two go hand in hand. You know, if you're swinging hard on every swing, it's damn hard to be consistent because you're just maxing out every shot, right? So, so you have to understand that we've got to get like some of these pieces are interlocking and some of them are kind of out in the fray. And just interlocking a couple of these little things together leads to huge boosts in speed without any effort. And that's the secret, right? So in your case, what I was saying is that you're stalling out, but you're not stalling out because you're stopping. You're stalling out because you're running out of places to go. You don't have any more rotation available to you, right? right. If you start down and take your lead shoulder and start rotating it right away, by the time you get to impact, there's nowhere else for you to go. Right. And so, of course, your arms and hands flip over because it's the only thing left that you have, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's the trick to what's going on with what your swing is. Mechanically, all those things, it's, it's such a subtle, fine thing to, to do this, but here's what really has to happen. You have to feel like that first half of the swing, in your mind, is waiting, and it's letting your arms drop back down to get the club shallowed out, and that connects all these pieces back together, right? When we take a back swing, like it's set up, you know, everything's, it's all glued together because we haven't started separating any of these joints, right? And then as we make that back swing, we think of it like a zipper on, on your jacket. As you make a back swing, you start to unzip all this stuff because it's all getting stretched out and pulled in all these different directions and they're moving in different angles. And all of this different stuff is happening, right? Mm -hmm. And as you pull them apart and all these pieces are disconnected, what you do in the downswing is you move these disconnected pieces as fast as you can. No, that totally makes sense. And instead, we need that transition to do this, and then we move it. Does that make sense? No, that makes total sense. So I realize it's a little, uh, what's that? I said, that's a lot what it feels like. It's hard to put into words, but that's definitely what I feel like. It's feel very like hard. Right, yeah. It's very hard to articulate this. So, but it, what, what has to happen is you have to feel it and you have to experience it, but you have to understand it first. You have to understand that we're unzipping ourselves and we've got to zip ourselves back together. And then once they're all zipped together, everything can move together. Otherwise you've got a jacket that's moving in two different places because it's unzipped. Right? Yeah. So to feel that, it, and it's going to feel strange at first, but you're, as you go out, what you need to do is this part needs to wait. You need to feel that your arms can drop back down because this is part of zipping everything. This is very unzipped and this is getting zipped back together, right? So as you start down, it's not here and then turn because you'll un you'll wind you'll you'll run out of turn at some point. You can only turn so far. You're turned as far as you can go. Okay. So now instead, you've got to wait for everything to kind of sink back up and get zipped back together. And then once you're in here, then you could release and get everything through the ball. But you can't do that while everything's unzipped. So right. I want you to feel that as you start down, that you, you're you slow from the top, essentially. Now, slow is very relative. I don't, I don't like that word, because it's not really slow. It's happening quick. But it's, it's getting your arms back in sync with your body is key. If your arms lag way behind your body because you're turning as fast as you can, as early as you can from the top, then your arms are unzipped the whole way into impact, and then right. they just fling through and flip over. Mm -hmm. That first little transition move is the key. If you and back in the day, I know you've been playing golf a while, but like I've been playing golf way too long, <laughs> but I was taught like years and years, like 20 years ago, people used to teach the swing to where you would kind of go back. And then you would pick the club up and then you would drop it and, re and wait and reset your arms and then try to turn through and stuff. Oh, yeah. And that, yeah, that was crazy because it didn't work. But the idea that I think that those instructors back in the day, the old school 80s stuff that I was learning, were trying to put this puzzle together in a way that what they observed happening, but it, they, did, they did it in a way that was very unnatural. Nobody's going to like, be able to reroute the club like this, right? That's what Hank Haney spent all the time with Charles Barkley trying to do. It doesn't work. You, you can't do that. But that's kind of like what you're going to feel, okay? Mm -hmm. So like in my swing, for example, when I go to the top, I have a tendency to, to swing really hard and fast because I can. And so I, and I like it. I like to swing really fast. And so I always tell myself to like swing as slow as I can. 
because I'm not trying to, I'm actually trying to slow my swing speed down so that I have more control because my tendency is to swing as fast as I can every time because it feels fun. awesome. <laughs> it feels <laughs> awesome, right? But I can't always guarantee where that's going. So, so what I do in my own swing, and, and again, this is more of a feeling, it's not a mechanical thing. We're just trying to re-zip that jacket back up. As I go to the top and I just feel like I do this. Now, this in and of itself does not work. That's stupid. You can't just drop your arms. But that's what I feel. But of course, I already know that my hips are moving, my weight is shifting, I'm starting to turn. So my feel and reel are very different. But that's what I have to put in my brain that I just have to wait. Just wait, 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 wait. Once my arms get down here and I let gravity and a little bit of muscular effort bring them down, and then I release the club and everything is all synced back up and I can get through the ball very easily and effortlessly. But it feels in my own head and I've measured this. And in fact, I was doing it this weekend with a launch monitor and out on the range with a laser range finder. If I swung what I felt like was like, you know, 85, 90% capacity, mm -hmm. my eight iron was going like 185, but this is like at 3000 feet altitude. Okay. So, and these range balls though, so it's a trade off, but, but my normal eight iron at sea level is like 175. So it's probably a 10 yard gap distance, right? Mm -hmm. When I swung slow, when I felt was slow and just waited on everything to sink back up and get everything glued together. And it felt so much more effortless and it felt like I wasn't gonna hit the ball far. Mm -hmm. I hit the ball the exact same distance and my good, really, really good ones where I just nutted it perfectly would mm -hmm. go maybe 190 at, at that altitude. So mm -hmm. the, the point is that I felt like two completely different golfers. One, I felt like I would like what you just looked like. You know, I'm going at it, I'm swinging and everything, I'm having a hard time keeping balance. It feels really quick and fast. And then one feels like I'm just waiting and then letting the club rip out at the bottom and the ball goes the exact same distance. Okay. So you have to think about it in terms of a feel, but the only way to really experience this is to go out on the range and see balls, you know, hit balls the way that you normally do and then kind of let everything sink up and wait and feel like your arms as you come down to start to kind of drop back down here to get that. This is part of zipping up your coat, right? You're getting everything back connected to your body. And just this little bit of connection as you start to come through helps start moving your arms together in sync with your body and allows you to apply force together. It's kind of like if you were throwing a punch like this, yeah, waiting for a second and letting your body move your arm and throwing a punch. That makes total sense. So I don't know a better way to describe it, but that's the best I can do. No, that's good. I definitely feel like that in my swing. Like, like you're saying, like on the way through, it's like everything's kind of doing its own thing. I'm just trying to do my best to get it back without, like you're saying, like have it work together like, like a zipped up jacket. So that's definitely, I've, I totally feel that in my swing. Okay, good. And, and so you can see that, right? Like you start turning right away. And it's just too soon. It's just a little bit out of sync, and you've got to wait just a second. Be patient. The, the thing you got to realize about the golf club it, is that it's a lever, right? It's a really long tool. And so much of what most golfers try to do, and there's a balance to this stuff, you have to use your body to provide power, but then you don't want to overuse your body, right? you're really overusing that rotation, that initial rotation to try and accelerate the club. And you can do that, but it's just inefficient. So when you start thinking about what really needs to happen, that club head just needs to move quickly. And to move quickly doesn't mean, you know, swing like Bryson DeChambeau, right? Like he's an extreme outlier. But if you look at the, the Luke Donald of the world and, and, you know, the guys who swing fast but don't look like they're wailing on it and can play at a high level they're just trying to get that club in to move fast at the last second when you think about moving quickly we're getting the club in to move quickly it doesn't take a ton of brute force that's my point to it right like we're not hitting a baseball we're not swinging a baseball bat this thing is very light the golf ball is very light so you need to think about i don't need to build up all this power from the top of my backswing because that's what you're doing you're going to the top of your backswing and then just it's firing fast. everything at once right mm -hmm. and it, well it feels like a lot of effort and power it is a lot of effort but it's not really getting the club to move as quickly as it can because quickly really not that much right I mean, you can just stand here and do 
And that's pretty quick, right? Now that, that's a flip, but it gets you the idea that, okay, well, I don't have to use my body at all to move quick. And then as I start thinking about what I want to happen down here, and I start saying, okay, well, I can be really patient all the way to here and just get a little extra momentum. And then the club still moves quickly, right? Instead of thinking about, oh, I got to you know, swing as hard as I can. Think about being patient and getting some quickness and some speed instead of trying to move this sledgehammer. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes total sense. So let's try a couple, just more practice swings, but just get the feeling of going to the top and just kind of waiting for a second, letting your arms zip back into your body and then let the club come through. Okay, I'll try that. Okay. So instead of doing this from the top, I'm trying to get a little, then the one up here. Yep. There you go. It's taking a lot of mental power. <laughs> Probably looks horrible. There you go. Do you want to face on? Yeah. All right, let's just take a quick look. <clears throat> oh my gosh. That was way harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm this is a lot easier when you're actually hitting balls because then you get to see it's the trick to this. When you're hitting balls, you can actually see the ball go and like, okay, I felt like I swung really slow, but the ball went really far. Right. When you're making practice swings, it's never going, you're not going to believe it. You're not going to be like, okay, that's really going to get me the distance that I need. So uh, this is one of those ones where you definitely want to be out there hitting balls. See how the club shallowing out pretty quickly here? And it's coming down from the inside. And I'll explain a couple other things of why this all makes sense in a minute, but this is the idea. Like you actually, you know, actually have more of a normal follow through there because you're, right, you're not yeah. slinging the club through anymore, right? You look more balanced. You look more uh, you know, under control. Now, obviously these are, these are slower swings, but you can see how the club shallows out really well here. And then you get this nice little zip of speed. Yeah, that's what it felt like. Shoulders opening up a little bit there, but it's better. Like before that right shoulder was just, you were pulling mm -hmm. hard under your chin as fast as you could. Okay. So that's closer. Now let me, talk about a couple things really quickly to help you understand why this produces speed, but yet it feels like you're swinging slow. There are two things that in the swing that help produce speed effortlessly down in the hitting area. And the first one is the, this idea of, of your hands in the club bed traveling in concentric circles. And all that means is just, you know, your hands are traveling on a, a smaller circle than the club bed is, right? It's going on a bigger circle. Mm -hmm. Now, if your hands, were traveling really close around your leg, right? Like super close. It's a really small circle. Right. The club head, when it's being moved in this small circle, your hands moving in a small circle, versus your hands moving in a big circle, that forces the club to accelerate. Right. Okay. It has to keep up with your hands. They're traveling on, on circles that are concentric, but one small and one big. It's, it's the same concept as the merry-go-round, right? If yeah. you're the kid in the middle of the merry-go-round, you don't have to be going that fast, but because the outside of the merry-go-round is attached, just like the club is attached via the shaft to your hands, 
then the outside goes really fast, but you can be really efficient mm -hmm. as long as those, those circles that your hands are traveling on is relatively small. To make that circle small versus, you know, making this big hand right. wrap. Like if you swing like this and you just feel this, actually just hop up and do this while I'm telling you. Make your hands travel on a really wide circle. Yeah. <laughs> Feels a little goofy, right? Yes. Now let your hands drop and get close to your thighs and move them in a tighter circle. <laughs> yeah, it kind of like whips through. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not even trying that hard. It's cool. <laughs> there you go. So you can you can hear the difference, right? Seriously. <laughs> so that's the idea of concentric circles. Now, when your hands shallow out, okay. instead of start going, you know, instead of your hands getting pulled out toward the ball, making your hands travel on this bigger arc, when they shallow out and they get zipped back up to your body and they travel on this narrow circle, that's why you feel like you're not swinging very fast, but the club goes fast. It's the physics principle, right? versus you having this big wide arc of your hands. That takes a lot more physical force. So that's number one. Number two is this idea of parametric acceleration where essentially as the club is going down, if you could somehow pull up on the handle at the time that you wanted the club to go down, you would cause this angle that's in your wrist to release faster, okay? Mm -hmm. So this versus just pulling the handle through, you know, on a straight line, this causes the club to bottom out and release quicker. Those two things together happen when you swing correctly. And that's why pros and guys like myself who hit the ball a long ways but don't swing very hard doing it, you can't see it because it's happening in this little space. It's very hard to really realize how powerful that is. But that's why I really feel like I wait and let my hands drop and I'm patient. And then I use that concentric circle to speed up the club. But I also... This is why you can't run out of pulling from the shoulder. If right. you do this too soon, then you've already started to release the club and the club just getting put through. But what I'm trying to do is I'm waiting, getting my hands down here. And then as my shoulder starts to go up, that's my left hand pulling against the butt of the club. This motion takes my hands from down here by my knee up to my mid thigh. That is traveling on an arc up. As wow. that's happening, that's forcing the club to go down. And do it faster. And that's like in the last second, so that's not like what I'm doing this, this immediately. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So this is happening super late and not really something that you need to try and create, but you need to understand why this works, right? Why can you swing slower and hit the ball or, you know, your body and everything feel like you're swinging slower, yet the club goes faster and it's more efficient. And that's the secret to this stuff is understanding some of these really you know, simple but hard to understand, hard to see physics principles. Like, you know, if your hand path is just a little bit in versus being out here, like it's hard to see that on camera. And it's yeah. hard to know, does that really make that much of a difference? But you can feel it. You can, you can feel how the club whips through. Right. When you, you know, if you keep trying to push your hands through on a straight line, there's no power in this. I need this angle to be released. But I also don't want to try and time that and you know, push against the shaft. So how do I get that to release automatically on its own? Well, my wrists have to be soft and I have to go up, right? As my leg goes up, my shoulder goes up, it pulls the butt of the club up, which forces the head down. Oh, okay. That makes a lot of sense. You know, I remember you had a video on the site where you had like a little, little thing that you made where you, you made a big circle and this yeah. little... This, the little ball or something was going everywhere, but you made a real tight circle. It was getting flung around really fast. That makes me a lot. That's the simplest way of, I mean, that's oversimplification of the golf swing, but that's what you want to try and emulate, right? Is how can we move as slow and efficient as possible and get this club head to move quickly? And that's really what you're trying to do. So do you think just moving forward, do you think the best way to practice this is like out on the range and just video it? Or what do you think? Yeah, well, this is more of a, you know, your swing itself mechanically is fine, 
What you need to do is develop the feel of the sequencing, of zipping your jacket back up. You need to practice feeling waiting, being patient. And I, and I hate that word waiting because it's not really what's happening. It's just letting everything sink back up, getting your arms back, you know, more connected to the, the rotation and the movement the body's trying to create. And getting the hands closer to your body versus having them way out here. You know, if you watch the app, next time you go to the range, just look down the range and watch like the worst hitters, right? There'll be no shortage of them. And what you'll find, the guys who hit it the worst and the shortest have this big arc to the club. They cast the club at the top and their hands also get as wide and far away from their body as soon as humanly possible because they're extending this right arm. So that's the only way that they know how to produce power, right? So they make their hands travel on this arc as wide as they can and then they have to scoop and chicken wing at the bottom, right? That will be the worst golfer out there. And he'll be swinging as hard as he can and the ball will just go absolutely nowhere, right? And then you'll watch somebody like me who looks really boring and my hands are really narrow and close because I, again, I'm trying to use these concentric circles and, you, and as I'm using parametric acceleration, it's happening in you know hundredths of a second. You can't see it. Yeah. But that's, that's the secret to this stuff is using those physics to accelerate the club without your body having to work so hard for it yeah that makes total sense man because i think i told you before but i had surgery on the shoulder from golf on the oh. rotation every time if i go after it and then you know i start getting wider here it starts hurting my shoulder and i'm like crap i'm not hitting as far and i go faster and then faster it really starts wearing that shoulder but with that little short zip at the bottom i don't feel like any anything on the shoulder, which is really good. It's exactly right. I mean, you, you, you hit the, the problem in golf on the head. The, when we start hitting it not as well, we start getting more out of sequence because we start trying to swing faster and harder earlier. We're like, oh, well, well, shit, I need to swing harder. I need, but I need more time. I need to do it harder sooner, right? The I'll tell you, I always hit the ball decently far, not like you do, but like far from me. And if I hit like my seven iron and I hit it, bad on like a par three and it goes like 160 or something i'm like oh shoot i can't look like a weenie out here dude i gotta step it up a little bit you know and then just like you're saying it keeps getting worse and worse it's the worst problem in the world to have but the true answer to it is sequencing it's it's actually being swinging slower being more patient you know you watch guys on the range who are really really efficient ball strikers you know tour players who are really efficient ball strikers and they look like they're swinging so slow from the top, right? There's no hurry. Yeah. Ernie Els is a great example of somebody who hit the ball plenty far. He moved quick, but he really leveraged, you know, his build and the way that he swung the club as much as possible. And I have really great old footage of Tiger or, or of Ernie. It's one of my old teaching pros. Used to he's from South Africa as well, and he knew Ernie. I used to play with him quite a bit, and Trevor Elman. And so I have great old footage of these guys. And the way that they swing and, and being up close to them in person and watching how smooth and elegant these guys were, how the distance they got is radically different than how you see everybody else on the planet swing, right? right? And so when you start realizing like almost all the tour pros look like they're barely moving and almost all amateurs look like they're moving as fast as they can, yet the, the disparity in ball striking ability is vastly different. You have to look underneath the covers a little bit and understand like some of these physics things and, and the sequencing and the mechanics of what's going on. It's not about swinging harder. It's truly about swinging more efficient. And when you get that and you understand these simple little things, you'll realize, gosh, I can swing what to me feels really slow from the top and hit the ball the same distance or, or further than I am now. Yeah, you're totally right, man. And I'm sorry to bother you. Just the last thing is, um, does the touch line look okay and everything? I've really been working on that too. It looks great. Yeah. Again, the problem is that you're, you're just running out of rotation, right? Like, like people who are going to use a little bit of right arm thrust in the swing. You know, again, that can't happen early because now you've got nothing left to hit with. Yeah, right? big so the people, who, the golfers who use a bit more right arm in their swing, their right arms tend to stay really close to their hip until very late. Right. Because they need that right arm to be able to hit with and extend and, and thrust the club down the line. But if you do that too soon, you run out of right arm. You're just right. running out of rotation. Okay. 
So that can make you lose your posture a little bit more because at some point, once you really rotate yourself, you have to come out of your posture. It's like wringing a towel. You're just making everything shorter. So you, you're eventually going to come out of it. And so you may see that you were losing your posture a little bit, but that's just because you were rotating way too hard too soon. Gotcha. Okay. Hey, well, thank you for taking the time. And that really, like, I couldn't put that into words, but that makes a ton of sense to me. So cool. thank you. Yeah, you bet. Well, let me know how it works out. Yeah, man, I'll hopefully be back in a little while. I can update you on how it's going. So. All right, man. Go out there and swing easy, but hit it hard. Sure, I'll try, man. You have a good one, okay? All right, buddy. You too. Thanks.